Hey everyone, uh, today I want to talk about the power of the gospel. And I know I've been thinking a lot about this, and it really seems like I know for myself, I tend to think a lot about what God can do for me. Almost put him in like a genie, I almost put him like in a lamp and then rub on him when I need something. And I've been thinking about what Jesus said. He's like, you know, like when you pray, like he knows everything that you need. And I've really been thinking about a lot of that. And I started looking at the life of Jesus. And, you know, Jesus knew what it was like. I, I fully believe that when Jesus said, you know, turn the other cheek. And, and when Je you know, it says that Jesus was tempted in all things, making him capable to minister in all things. This is in Hebrews 2 and in Hebrews 4. Well, I've been thinking about that because, like, Jesus, especially the turning the cheek one, this is what got me thinking because kids are kids. And just they're just bullies. I've, I really believe that that there was rumors going around that Jesus was... A bastard child I mean you have all these naysayers you know and so Jesus I mean imagine Jesus being bullied and his bullies are trying to go to him and they knock him down they punch him and Jesus doesn't fight back he turns the other cheek okay so they hit it again but what did Jesus do there? He literally stripped the bullies of their power. Because no bully, it's no longer bullying. Now it's like just senseless beating. And there's no joy in that. It's like beating a... I mean, you kind of see what I'm saying. I can't really explain it very well, but... It's like you literally take the power away from the bully when you turn the other cheek. And I really believe Jesus experienced this. This is why he was able to minister. And this is why he was able to say, turn the other cheek. Because he did that. I mean, he was a child growing up. And children have been children. And there's bullies. There's It's just what it is. And it got me really thinking about the power of the gospel. And if you think about the life of Jesus, his entire focus was on other people so imagine Jesus before the power of the Holy Spirit came he sees the oppressed he sees the captives he sees the demon possessed he see the lepers and because he was focused on other people he was continually praying for other people he was praying for the lepers he was praying for you know the bullies that were striking him in the cheek and in the other one he was praying for the sick. He was praying for the demon-possessed. And then for him to go through the wilderness and get anointed by the Holy Spirit, I mean, there's a good possibility that all his prayers that when that Holy Spirit came upon him, or you know, it, that all his prayers were then poured back into him and answered through his own heart for other people, for his love for others. And, I mean, if you look at, like, defeating sin... If I'm not focused on myself, but if I'm always focused on other people, I really think that that's a key. <laughs> it's a key to the kingdom. Another key to the kingdom. Identity, as you know, the series I just got done with is definitely a key to the kingdom. But what if focusing on other people and loving other people is a key to the kingdom? I mean, like really doing it because something that Lord's been working on me, not so much lately, but I'd say like a year ago was I would always, you know, get this, oh, woe is me, woe is me. And I had this friend, a good brother, who was wrongly incarcerated. And supposed to be only a couple of years, ended up being almost five, because when COVID hit, he couldn't get out because of whatever, a whole bunch of nonsense. But this brother had four kids, and he couldn't see his, he couldn't see his own children for over four years. And whenever I would get into this state of woe is me and, and be thinking about myself and the Lord would always be like, you don't have it as bad as this guy. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, it's so true. And I think whatever situation that you find yourself in right now, you can literally begin to have 
empathy for someone else who has it worse than you. And what does it do? It takes your focus off of you and puts it on other people. And that's the life of Christ. That's the power of the gospel. That's why it says, love God, love your neighbor. That's why in 1 John 3 we read, these are the commandments that you have faith in Jesus Christ and love your neighbor. That's why it also says in 1 John, John got love. He was a disciple that Jesus loved. I mean, his identity was in the love of God. And that's why it also says in 1 John 3, I think it's like verse 13 or 14, it says that you know this, that you have passed from death to life if you love one another. Jesus also said the same thing. He says, you know that you are my disciples for your love for one another. And it's like you can have all the wisdom. You can have all the knowledge. You can. This is the one that really even gets me. You can give your life up to be burned. You could literally be crucified upside down. But it means nothing if you don't have love. It's so powerful, people. You want to be free? Start focusing on other people. If you're having a bad day, go try and love on somebody. Like, go be Jesus to them. I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking about Jesus, like, walking the earth right now. He had to have felt alone. He just had to have. You know, I mean, sure, people are like, no, he didn't because he always had God the Father. But, but in reality, did he? The first 30 years of his life, did he? You know, because if he did, would he have needed to go to the temple when he was 12 years old? You know, where are you? Well, I, you know, I'm in the house of my father. Where else am I going to be? <laughs> you know, he's like had an opportunity to be in the house of God and he didn't want to leave there because he was at home. So in reality, here's Jesus for 33 years away from his home, being ridiculed, called a bastard when he was a kid, you know, and then denied by his own people. Like this, I love this scripture in Zechariah. I think it's Zechariah 13, 3, or is it 313? I don't think there are 13 chapters in Zechariah, so it's probably chapter 3. It says, where did you receive the wounds in your hands and your feet and the reply which was a prophecy of Jesus I received these wounds in the house of my friends in the house of my family Jesus got persecution Jesus got rejection he got it he understood it it's just really something to think about if you think about Jesus's life you know I don't like using the word estranged but possibly being estranged from his father until the Spirit came upon him. So for 30 years, he had to walk around like wishing for one thing and that was to go home. And what did he do? He thought of other people. That's one of the ways that he overcame his flesh. Fully believe it. it was because he was others focused. He's praying for the lepers, praying for the lame. You know, he had a heart for other people. And that's the power of the gospel. Because the gospel, the, gospel, the, ch the, the church has manipulated it into a self-help program. And so they try to get you to focus on fixing yourself. And the longer that you keep trying to fix yourself, the more your thought process is on you the more that you're going to be disappointed in you. But when we really realize the power of the gospel has created me brand new, I can actually begin to have a heart for other people because this new man doesn't need fixing. This new man is the resurrected Christ in me. And then I can begin to be thankful in all things. I truly can be thankful in all things. And then I can actually begin to walk as he walked, which is loving others. And that's what we're called to do. Love God, love others. That's the power of the gospel. So I said all that to say this, that next time you're having a bad day, try loving somebody. Try blessing them. And you're going to watch how your life will begin to change. You know, the kingdom of God is joy, peace, and righteousness. 
you're in the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to find joy. You know, you're not going to, I mean, I don't care if you're down to your last penny. You know, that, that, that widow, that she gave her last might, her last penny. And I guarantee you, she found such joy in doing that. She helped other people. Like the power of the gospel is, is loving others. It really is. It really is. And you're going to find your joy in it. So, all right, I love you guys. I, I hope that that speaks to somebody today. And can just be free of yourself. That's the key. Being free of yourself. Being found in Christ. And walking in what he walked. Which was thinking of other people. Even Barabbas. Even even his, even those who called him his enemy. He still gave his life for him. No greater love than this. But to give your life. Huh. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's kind of so... I just feel the presence of God right now. I'm just kind of chilling. It's just really good. It's just really, really good. Anything else, Lord? That's... That's the, that's the kingdom here on earth. That's literally the kingdom here on earth. You've been given His Spirit... So that you can commune with him and you keep this flesh suit on to commune with those in the flesh. Think about that one. Love you guys.